All righty. So I've got a little bit of a follow-up for my trauma video. Specifically, we're going to be talking about how it relates to vision quests and spiritual journeys and how to run them and when to run them in uh, Dungeons and Dragons or really any role-playing game. Now, specifically, so I wanted to note about the, the trauma. So I talked about mechanically how it can kind of function as this like resolve versus meltdown in combat in a vaguely darkest dungeon type way. But I also forgot to mention that just to like add to this sort of tone tone we're going for of this sort of like war is bad and all that jazz it does generally make you want to it like promotes avoiding unnecessary combats because now there's sort of like a downside to like watching like innocent people die or killing them for no reason and stuff like that um so yeah i just want to say like that's another thing added to trauma is that like i know it is D, &D that's a combat game the, the whole point is that you solve everything through combat but i find there's already enough things pushing everything towards wanting to make everything into a combat like uh, the game can afford to have something that pushes back against that to to some degree so at least you have some reason to question before jumping into any single combat like is there any other method we can go about avoiding this okay another thing i wanted to say narratively that i forgot to mention is that uh, this like trauma and then resolving it is a uh, is like gonna be like a really main way to sort of promote this idea of character development and i realized this after watching some like actual plays with some try hard improvisers they you know when they find it most character characterly narratively appropriate they'll just say to the table or make it clear um that like what they've gone through has made them depressed or made them suffer through whatever uh like sort of mental condition that they're going through and then when it makes most sense to the story and to the character they will at some point say like hey you know what i'm i've like improved that i'm no longer depressed i've like overcome my my fears or whatever which got me thinking so the whole method right now that like the dmg promotes or like has as its only real way of getting rid of these madnesses is you basically you hire a professional and go to therapy for a while which again may be realistic now in my last video i said the words like eh, well that might not be very realistic that's not entirely what i meant well like what i meant is that it's like very realistic to the to the real reality world that we all live in but to the genre of the story that like this action adventure type of game that D, D is it is not like appropriate to that genre at all that is just um it, it is kind of like incongruous which on the one hand if our goal here is to tell stories and have moments i do think it could be funny to have that story of like hey guys remember that time the barbarian got severely depressed and then had to go to therapy for six months that's like funny and that's like funny in the way that i like and try to want to have more of in my campaign of that like funny from challenging and subverting the tropes of the genre uh and like you know doing something unexpected with it but it's not like entirely unrealistic it does not like damage the verisimilitude because that is like a real thing that could happen you know, like they did have spiritual leaders and priests and shamans back in the good old days that you would talk to to like work through with your problems just not something you would expect in an action story uh you know it's it's not like the comedy that comes from i'm thingless thingless and i'm the applesauce druid because that's just uh that can be funny but that comes at the cost of the um you know the, this sense of the like the verisimilitude that you're trying that you know you try so hard as a dm to try to keep some semblance of that um but uh you know 
you, you, you do what you can. All right, so that, that was that. Uh, the other thing, so the problem with that, that barbarian therapy thing is that the first time that happens, that's a funny story. Um, but after that, it just, like every time, every six months, you have to come over your mental illness or whatever, and you have to go to therapy, that just becomes a chore at that point, and that's no longer a, a story or anything. Uh, but I still want to keep that as an option if, like, people want to use that and they just uh, don't want to bother with what I'm about to talk about, which is this thing I had come up with. Um, well, not come up with. This is, like, one of the ye oldest storytelling tropes in all of the history is this idea of, like, going out on a vision quest. Because I was thinking about, like, like action movies adventure tv shows and stuff like that those characters uh, you know like luke skywalker doesn't go to therapy for six months he gets told by yoda like hey go in that cave you will and then your weapons you will not need them um go in there and then kill your or kill your rival and then take his helmet off and see your own face in there and then that instantly sort of gets you over this sort of self-doubt and fear you've been having. Which, again, that's very much so not realistic. That's You, you can't just go to the cave of dark sideness and then just uh, like fight your embodied fears and then get over your depression. But that's very much so like a great story and a great like short way to tell people like... Uh, and to like show an audience well in this case it is your players that like hey we're overcoming i'm doing a thing and then overcoming a flaw uh which you know that that's just great like we got we're we're, we're cooking with character development there uh so before i get into the spirit quest itself the thing that has to be made like abundantly clear to a player before this uh before you do something like this well there's some things to at least keep in mind when running a vision quest a spiritual journey for one it is going to be extraordinarily railroady because it is just inherent to the story you're going to tell with this adventure you already know what the ending is going to be that ending is like locked in stone you already know like hey i'm going to have my player overcome a challenge and then teach them a lesson about this concept that they've been struggling with. Uh, so you already know the ending, which means the whole rest of the spirit guide quest is going to be, you know, guiding them through that process. Um, so, so yeah, you, you don't want to just spring this on a player. You don't want them to go to sleep and then have them wake up and then force them to go through this whole thing. You want them to, like know about this like you want them to know that this is like a possibility and you want them to seek it out you, you don't want like you know a player should be like hey i want to get over this flaw and i want to go on a spirit journey to fix this problem about myself so i would very much so lean towards doing this as a one-on-one -on -one session adventure type of thing though it is possible for you to do this with a group I, I think it more so lends itself to that one-on-one -on -one experience the other thing is that you've got to like keep this short keep it you know sweet and simple you because if your players are gonna like at least to some degree understand that this is kind of be like a railroady sort of cut -y type experience that you're going through you definitely don't want that to go on for like multiple sessions you want this to get like in and out ideally one session probably not even like the length of a full session you probably want to keep this to like an hour if you can at least that's what i would shoot for uh, but yeah okay so on to the vision quest itself so what are the types of vision quests or like how can we get you into your vision quest uh so some classics psychedelic induced hallucinogenic trip they can just do either like a sort of real world ish type of mushroom type of thing uh, or you can do magical land uh, supernatural mushroom for super psychedelic drug um, both good classic options the supernatural touched dream either your god or your a ghost or something 
or conceivably just magic itself has some sort of influence on your dream uh, and you know you, you go into a dream sequence type of thing uh, astral projection or meditation induced psychosis so this is the kind of ang the last airbender you you know cross your legs and start meditating and then you go into the spirit world and go through a journey of self-discovery in there or you can just do straight up enchantment illusion based mind altering magic which this one is sort of a cover all you can you know when the wizard casts go inside your mind spell you know anything is on the table at that point you can go crazy with that um okay so those were the hooks now the venue so this is like where your spiritual journey is going to like be taking place so another one uh the again all classics you live a full life in another time or place as another person this is the classic picard playing the flute and he's lived like 25 or he's i don't know he lived his whole life as like uh this worker on this planet and like doesn't even realize he's in this whole world and um you know you can do one of those things uh or you can be an entirely different person you can be like um you know, like you, you again you can do whatever with be another person you you can live through the life of the villain or something like that would be pretty wild okay so the spirit world again avatar the last airbender you can be in the astral plane or is not yatabi that is the name of my my equivalent of the fey wilds um okay you can have events you can be in your past like one of those um Oh god, I forget which movie. Like I think I think the second Avengers Endgame that like you know going to the past, maybe that's not necessary. I I think that could that could be like a spirit. Well, that's literally time travel, which is not what this is supposed to be. This is like going into your mind escape and then dealing with dramatic stuff from your background or conceivably even in the future, which could be neat. Uh, you can just be in totally bizarre abstract wonder world like alice in wonderland type of just totally crazy out there like no rules nonsense or you can do the other classic journey to the center of the mind this way like every tv show that well i don't know like okay but yeah just the you know the inside out if you will you go inside your mind and you deal with these memories and stuff directly in your own brain uh, all good locations to have the journey take place in so the first thing that we we go out on the journey well what do we experience first the road to hell this is just you go inside there and it's bad you are directly confronted with these bad things these traumatic things that you've gone through and that you are like failing to deal with and this is the expression that you have this bad thing that you are not capable of dealing with right now so some uh, generally if we're going campbellian mono myth this is like your like threshold guardian if you will or maybe, maybe the threshold guardian is a little later i forget exactly how that works but you okay uh basically any of these if you're feeling lazy just to make it their their dad that's like uh, an easy one to go for so the adversarial figure as a monster to be fought uh, th this could just be the villain this could be anyone that they are like competing with that they really don't like and then you know you have them show up as like a evil demon monster that the player has to fight uh it could be like an abusive figure from your past or something something that uh like expresses that like hey the way you should deal with this is by talking to them and like you know this person might just come up to you and say like oh you are a failure and you've never done anything right in your life and you've never succeeded and all you do is are disappoint me and you know just be really upsetting and then like have the player it, it, like give the player the the uh like the implication the that they're supposed to be arguing against this and like this is supposed to be like them on trial if you will uh, or the like unresolved problem that's always been nagging at you this can sort of be like the beautiful mind uh kind of like you you've got this situation that you've been trying to deal with 
uh, you know, if you're like a wizard, maybe this is just a straight up, I've been trying to figure out this spell or whatever, and I've been working all the over the time to figure out the meaning of this prophecy, and I've just never been able to figure it out. The, the point here is that this challenge should directly be tuned for, suited for the PC's strength. You know, if you got a fighter guy, then he should be trying to fight this challenge. Like, you, you should make it clear that, like, that they're supposed to use their strength to fight this. Uh, and then the, uh, the challenge should be like some sort of fear externalized. It should be something that the player struggles with and like it needs to overcome and is failing to overcome in their life. Um, the important part is that they fail. They do this and they are just incapable of succeeding. So one of the nice things about this being a dream sequence is that you don't have to worry about reducing your player to zero HP. There's no rules at all. You can have them drop to zero HP and either they wake up or you can have them drop to zero HP and then they just like continue through this dream sequence in some other way. You can do whatever you want. Okay, so you fail this confronting this challenge. Then you are met with your guide someone who like you've relied upon in the past or just like an idea that you have like relied upon and like used to center and anchor yourself in the past so you can just have very classic mentor figure uh you know the yoda and the um all the past avatars and avatar the last airbender people that like have guided you in the past you can have like a spirit animal if you've like always been a big person that has like used nature or something to like get through tough times in the past maybe like this spirit animal is a representation of that sort of natural atmosphere or that like that power of the natural cycle it can just be like a parental figure you know uh, mom dad brother, sister, uh, like whoever you, uh, like, like in, in when you're growing up, this person who has like been good to you, or maybe not even necessarily been good to you, but someone that you have like relied on and has helped you in succeeding and becoming the person you are, um, could be like an object. Let's say like, if you're just really into the power of art and every time you've ever like struggled with stuff you've gotten through it by getting into painting or whatever you know maybe there's just like an animated statue or something that talks to you and it's like a metaphor for the idea of like creating art through getting for getting through problems uh or it could just be a divine servitor it could be like a ghost could be an angel or a demon that just straight up talks to you and like uh you know and so like if you're really really into religion and if you use like worship and stuff as your means of coping with stuff then you know the the angel is probably a good option for you then the, so you meet the guide and they like teach you a lesson they tell you like hey you actually can't deal with this through whatever means you were using you can't just fight your way through this you have to talk to it and then learn about your feelings or whatever and it can give you the like a totem like something to really, really drive this point home that like this is a thing that represents um, this idea. So holy symbol, if you if they're trying to get the point across that like yeah, you need to use faith and belief and just hope to defeat this. It could be a book if they're like you got to use knowledge, like you you got to be smarter than this thing. Um, a toy, you got to use like childhood innocence, like the idea of like that antithesis of evil. You've got to use just like pure, unadulterated good uh, weapon or shield. Maybe if you're really meek, not a fighty guy, maybe this is like you've got to be courageous and you've just got to like run up to them and fight them. Uh, statuette of animal or profession. This is really, you, you can do like anything with this if it's just like, oh, you can, like, here's a statue of a dove and doves are a symbol of peace or profession it could be a, a knight it could be a wizard uh, like whatever there's no limit to this this could be like some sort of uh like you the gift the totem could be like a plant like a rose or a flower that is representative of growth or something 
or maybe they don't give you a literal physical gift, a totem at all. Maybe they just teach you this lesson and this is like a more symbolic or like there there's no like symbolic item. It's literally just the concept the idea that they're giving to you. Okay, so you like talk to your guide and he gave you this thing and you like learned a or conceivably learned a lesson or something. Now you're being tested against uh, the challenge again. You're, you're going back to the thing that you've just confronted. You're facing the challenge, but now you have the lesson from your guy. So now you're holding up your toy and then trying to uh, use innocence and good against this thing. And, you know, you, I would probably usually be running these as, like, skill challenges, uh, except I guess a lot of the time, I guess combat can work too, and then you might just roll attacks and then damage and all this stuff is super abstract and like your use the attack roll is an amount of like the power of will of if you are able to overcome uh, or like really just show the effect of how this thing is uh, uh like detracting from the the challenge or like how how it is helping you succeed in overcoming that challenge and then the damage being representative of just how much of an effect that it has had could do something like that. I'd probably just lean towards uh, good old Blades in the Dark progress clocks, just skill challenge type thing. But what's important is you try to use this lesson and then you fail, uh, or at least you appear to fail, and it appears as this as though this doesn't work, and now you're entirely without hope because now you're like, well, I can't just do the thing that I'm good at. I can't do the thing that this guide has just taught me. I guess there's nothing I can do. And then at this point, the player, the character, should be tempted by whatever it is, the madness that they're trying to overcome. So, you know, if, if they are, like, paranoid, they they should at this point be given in to, or at least be tempted to just give in on thinking everyone is against them and that there's some grand conspiracy against anything that they do. Or if they're depressed, they should be able to just, like, uh, there should be, you should give them the option to just walk back and, like, crawl in a hole and just uh, sit there. Uh, the point here is that the temptation needs to effectively guarantee success. Like, it needs to guarantee that they will be comforted in this situation. Like, if they just give in to their alcoholism, maybe, like, a bottle of something appears and that, like, there is uh, some entity that like informs them like hey if you just drink this then this guardian you, you can ignore this guardian and just uh, you don't ever have to deal with it so th that should be like offered to them and they should be tempted uh, and but ultimately I guess on the one hand you you could fail here you, you could like all right yeah I'll just give in to my my trauma and then uh, not grow and then that's when you get uh, end of Evangelion you, uh, you get the movie ending or you resist the temptation and you refuse to be to like give in to the uh, depression or whatever and you uh, continue to to fight and try to overcome this challenge and that's you know your Evangelion 23 24 episodes you know where you you succeed um so when, when you decide, okay, I'm not going to give in to this temptation, I'm going to keep fighting. So what happens next? Uh, the mirror self. You are shown a reflection of yourself in the challenge. You realize, oh, gee, gee whiz, this like guy that I have been uh, fighting this, you know, oh, my, my dad is a zombie monster who's trying to attack me. I now realize in the things that he's saying, he has the same hatred that I have inside me. Like He's just expressing his hatred for this other thing, but I have a hatred inside myself that I have to deal with. Uh, something like that. Or if you want to not have to be so complicated about it, you can do the good old Luke Skywalker. You defeat the guy, and then you take his helmet off, and then you see that that guy is you the whole time. You know, This is sort of the like the twist part. This is when they realize, like, Ah, okay, now I see in this challenge the negative emotion and how it's like, or like the behavior that I'm having and how it's negatively affecting everyone and everything around me. 
uh, and so then once you realize that reflection, that is when like when when you've like overcome it, you you win, you you've succeeded, and then you might not consciously be aware of this. It might just be an unconscious thing that you sort of recognize, but you realize like okay, so this was just this was about me the whole time and about the fear and or the self doubt inside of me. Uh, you know, so now you, you've you seen that fear inside of you and now you can work towards overcoming it. You can now, you see yourself in a new image. You can start embracing the growth. Uh, and this is when you reach the point of self-actualization. You internalize the lesson that you've learned from the guide and you can like bring it back to your reality. Um, uh, like at this point, the, the spirit journey is over. You are back in real life land and you are a changed person. You've overcome your trauma. You reduce the severity of your madness. I would say by, so for my system, it goes from one to four, technically five, but effectively four. Then you would, re would reduce the number by the amount of challenges, the confrontations that you'd overcome. So if someone had gotten like extraordinarily uh like uh, close to going fully insane and has had some like severely problematic and debilitating like issues for them to overcome you know their spirit quest is going to be a little bit longer than a guy who eh, just has one little minor problem that he needs to figure out okay so yeah that, that is it for that spirit quest but there are some implications that kind of come about uh, from this whole sort of system that I've kind of been pondering and realizing. So for one, how, how does evil interact with this trauma system, specifically like an evil character, which I did want to, I wanted to allow like good players as, long, as well as evil players. I think they are both interesting characters with stories worth telling. Um, and I think generally, uh, so, so I was thinking like, hmm, well, does an evil character, should they gain trauma from, uh, like watching their friends and family die? Like, or like if you're evil, do you just not really sort of care about that thing? And or especially like, okay, well you can play a vampire in this system. Like if you're a vampire and you're just like eating innocent people you're either going to like get numb to that you're going to build up a tolerance to that very quickly or you are going to um or or you're just gonna like go really crazy really quickly ah okay another thing i remembered suspension of disbelief that was the term i was trying to remember for uh that thingless mcdingless the applesauce druid that the thing that he he threatens with his mere existence but anyway okay so oh yeah so evil vampire uh yeah so, so you're like you're probably not gaining trauma from from killing innocent people because that's like the thing you do all day every day and then i sort of thought about it and it's like well you know what both like good people and evil people are both like traumatized individuals it's really like how they go about dealing with that trauma that is the is that like more so determines whether or not they're like a good or evil person like a good person that is the type of person that seeks out like help and seeks out this spirit quest to overcome their flaws and problems and really tries their hardest and goes at great cost of their self to like overcome these problems so that other people don't have to like deal with them and suffer the consequences of them whereas like an evil person truly like thrives in these flaws and awful uh like mental like conditions that they are in they like thrive in them and they welcome more of it if it would mean that it brings them more power um so because i was also thinking like well it should also be possible for there to be a good vampire just because someone is a vampire does not necessarily mean they are evil 
someone should be able to be a vampire and truly and honestly struggle every single day with the fact that they have to eat like uh innocent people um and like like they should actively be able to like meditate and do things that try to get them to like cope with that reality and hopefully improve and get over that problem um so i was kind of also thinking well what is the sort of implication with that and like depression is that to say like if you're not actively going out of your way to try to get over this thing does that mean you are an evil person well i would say no because like well, for one, uh, it's called like battling with depression for a reason. You, you don't just, you, you don't like want more of it. Uh, and I think like the question that you could ask to either a good or evil, uh, that you could ask to someone to determine whether or not they're like good or evil, which could, so on the other hand, it's very possible to be both an evil and depressed person. Like that is very much so a possibility. Um, but like, if you ask someone like, Hey, would you like take on a much more depression? Would you become like much more of a, like a miserable person if it meant that I gave you like a kingdom and you got to be a king and hold power over multiple people, which like, if you're a good person, you're like, well, dear God in heaven. No, that's like the, like that's. I, there is nothing I would ever do to take on more of this feeling like I, I want to get rid of it and like or I, I would do anything I could to just like not have this feeling anymore you know but uh, like an evil person would say like oh absolutely you're, you're telling me like all right so I have to deal with being even more miserable and feeling even worse and awful but now I get to control all these other people in their lives and their whims like for sure i'm taking that deal uh which on the other hand well now this has a sort of question about like but what about like a warlock or someone who derives their power from this trauma does that inherently make them evil that they are directly gaining power for trauma i would say that's like a different definition of power like a warlock could be good because what they're really gaining from this trauma is like they're getting magical abilities and so if they use these for good, if they take on this trauma to help other people in need and to like they, they accept this as like a cost to themselves, uh, that's like the most good and selfless type of person you can possibly be. Um, whereas like, on the other hand, if you use these magical abilities to run around and take over towns and villages and force all the peasants to do labor for you, well, then you are an evil warlock. Um, but yeah, I, I just thought that was like a sort of interesting because my system originally had no means of like, uh, I got rid of alignment, so I never had characters write down like I'm lawful good or I'm chaotic evil or whatever in between i uh just just got rid of it because i figured like that's not like it's just not like uh i guess it's useful in terms of cosmology and spells and all of that but like for playing your character people are a lot more complicated and nuanced than forever being good or forever being evil and acting in accordance with that with everything they do uh, but I think with this, like, this is a generally good way to kind of tell, like, is someone a good or a not so good person? Like, like, do they just accept more uh, madness and have it hurt and affect people around them? Or do they go out of their way to make sure that the people around them are, like, safe and secure? So anyway, you know, I'm not a psychologist, so don't psychology at me. Uh, that's it. All right, I'll see you later.